Hi, I'm Pete Whitley. On June 21st, I'm going to be here at Schmidt Music's Eight Music Day, uh, sharing some ideas on how you can improve your improvisation. These include uh, ways of negotiating chord changes that are much easier than you may think, and hopefully will give you some confidence, some tools that you can use to achieve success. All right, one of the first things uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna share with you is a warm-up. And what I'm hoping this warm-up will give you are some basic tools, some basic theoretical knowledge and technical skill that will help you uh, learn to improvise on the tunes that we're providing for you. So the first thing would just be to play a major scale. And as you play the major scale, be thinking scale degrees. So, for example, if I play a concert B-flat major scale, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. I'm thinking up and down the scale. I'm thinking what scale degrees are the notes that I'm playing. From there, we can build, um, add to the warm up, the one, the four, and the five chords in whatever key you're practicing in. So the one chord will be one, three, five. The four chord will be starting on the four, six, one. And the five chord will be five, seven, two. So I'll play those. So I would learn to play the one and the four and the five chord in root position. The next step, we'll, what we'll do is, so you don't always play each chord starting on the root. We're going to play, I'll start on the C chord or the one chord in root position, and then I'll keep the common tone where possible and then move the, the arpeggio up only if necessary. So it'll sound like this. So that would be starting in root position. Now I'm gonna start in first inversion. So I'm gonna start on the three and I'll play the one, four, five, same thing. start in second inversion, so the five will be on the bottom of the G of the C chord. And if you can do that in the key of concert B flat, the key of C, the key of G, and the key of G minor, I'll, I'll go to the G minor, it's all on the handout that's uh, available to you. Uh, that will give you a good foundation uh, that will help prepare you for uh, playing on these songs. Now, once you get those initial warm-ups, so you can comfortably play them through the one, four, five chords pretty easily without having to think. Thinking is kind of the enemy of improvisation, so you want to simulate the foundation so well that you don't have to think. Uh, I have a second warm-up that you can go to, and it, it starts with a concert B flat or a major scale with a half step in between five and six. And some people refer to this as a major bebop scale, but what it, what it basically does, it makes it so you can start on the beat and you'll have um, all the chord tones line up on strong beats. So it'll sound like this. <laughs> sounds like a walking bass line. Um, that scale, it gives you kind of, a, if you play it an eighth note, I mean, I use that type of sound a lot. Um, so it's a very useful scale to learn and to practice. And so you're not only playing major scales, you're playing other half steps, other intervals within the scale as well. Then the second part, after you play that, then what we'll do is we'll play the major pentatonic scale from the, the one, from the four, and from the five of each key. And the major pentatonic scale is basically one, two, three, five, six. And I'll, I'll do it through an octave rate. So here, if I, again, in the key of concert B flat, I'm, I'm thinking one, two, three, five, six. And this warm up, I go up to the one that's an octave higher, so I'll go now I'll do it from the four. 
pentatonic scales, both the major and the minor, are kind of the money scale because they are so commonly used and they give you, um, it helps you to realize vocabulary that you've been hearing um, all your life and didn't know it, that a lot of it was just a pentatonic scale or an embellished pentatonic scale. So there you go. There's one more component to the warm-up I want to go over and that's the minor component. And I'm going to start out with a concert G minor uh, natural minor scale, which is the same as a B flat major scale. And then I'm going to go to two of the variations. One is the melodic minor scale and the harmonic minor scale. You should just know these. You may kind of wonder, why should I bother? You know, what's the use? They actually, you'll find them melodically used quite a, a great deal in different contexts. So I would just encourage you to learn the, the minor scale. So here's starting with the natural minor scale. <laughs> do the melodic minor, which is kind of like a, a concert uh, G major scale with a flatted third going up and then a natural minor coming down. And then the harmonic minor, which has a, uh, it's like a natural minor scale with a raised seventh. From these scales, we can uh, extract what I, are, are the, the minor pentatonic scales. And the minor pentatonic scales, you're going to use them all the time, uh, in all kinds of contexts. And if you take the minor scale and you use the 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, or you can think of it as a major scale with the 1, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 7. After you learn your, your minor scales, let's now outline the 1, 4, and 5 chords in concert G minor. And I'm going to do it in root position. So it'll be one, three, five of, from the one. Then from the four, it'll be basically four, six, one. And the five, this will have one, this is where we're going to raise the third. We're going to have five, raise or natural seven, two. And that's where we're using the melodic minor or the harmonic minor. Kind of, we're using that raise seven. So it's going to sound like this. <laughs> minor. Uh, now, it's great to practice that with the voice leading concept again, so if I do that, keeping the common tone when I can. So that's starting root position. Now I'm going to start in first inversion, so the third, the three is in the base of the one chord. I'm going to start in second inversion. Now, if you can do that in the key again, the key of um, concert G minor, that will really help you when you're working on summertime, which will be in concert G minor. And uh, if you can learn in more keys, I would learn this in all 12 keys eventually but these are some of the building blocks that will help you to learn to improvise. Now, next I'd like to talk about the minor pentatonic scale. And this is a very important scale that you can get from the minor scale. Basically, it's the one, three, four, five, seven of a minor scale. Or from a major scale, you could think of it as the one flat three, four, five, flat seven. It sounds like this. <laughs> got a nice grasp of the concert G minor pentatonic scale. Let's add one note to embellish that. And that would be what's called the flatted fifth. And if you go basically, again, one, three, four, five, and just lower that five by a half step so we're altering it. 
Now that's called the blues scale. Actually, I rarely play the scale like that. I think it sounds a little corny, but I often will embellish the minor pentatonic with that flat at five. So I may go. So these are, that's the flat five. So that is a nice tool. In some ways, what I like to do is think of the pentatonic scales as, as just two, they're kind of like starting points. And then I, I don't only play those notes, I'll embellish those notes to come up with licks that I think sound, that have the, the feel and the vibe that I'm looking for. Um, so you can think of the pentatonics, major and minors, basically triads that have a couple extra notes um, to give it, give it a little more melodic interest. One of my first suggestions to everybody is to memorize the melodies. Really, the melodies, the more tunes you learn, it can be anything. It can be hip tunes, tunes you'll want to play for your friends, nursery rhymes that you're just practicing to train your ear. Just playing by ear is a big deal. And so I, I would highly suggest that before you come to the, the jam session, is that if you can, try to memorize each of the melodies. Then that gives you a point of departure for your, your uh, attempts for improvisation. So I'm gonna take Summertime. And Summertime uh, is, is, a lot of it is just the minor pentatonic scale, the G minor pentatonic scale. And um, you could use that to, in, in the blues scale to embellish the melody. Uh, you can use some of the chords, some of the arpeggios in the chords, and you can just just play intuitively, just follow your instincts. So what you might do is first learn Summertime. I would learn it kind of straight. Uh, one, two, three, four. place to start embellishing the tune is on the long notes where you can bring out some of the changing harmonies um, or you could like a singer you could just kind of paraphrase the rhythms a little bit so I might do something like this Try some, try some of that minor pentatonic stuff. Try some of the arpeggios um, that are related to where you are on the tune and see what you can come up. Particularly the five chord. I like when you're at that very end of that first eight bar phrase, there's a concert D7. And if you, basically that's in minor, so it has what's called a flat nine implied. So you have that, uh, uh, all derived from the minor scales and I love bringing that out um, so. so tip number one memorize your melody uh, and just intuitively or intellectually try to figure out ways to embellish the melody now a great way to learn to play chord changes is to learn to play different kinds of accompaniment patterns over any tune you're working on so don't worry so much about being the greatest soloist worry about can I um, uh, outline the changes in some way. And a, a way I like to practice it's, at first is just through bass lines. So I'm going to give you some tips as bass players or non-bass players what you might do at least to kind of get started. And usually with a bass line um, you're going to put the root of each chord on the first beat when the chord first appears. 
Um, then there's all kinds of different ways you can realize each chord. I would just start with just the triad, one, three, five, some kind of pattern like that. And I'm, I'll demonstrate this just over the blues. And I'm just going to use one, three, five. Now, if there's a fast chord that only lasts like two beats, I'm just going to go one, three. So something like this. Uh, this is the B flat blues, um, blues uh, by five. <laughs> this bass line you'll ever play, but it'll get you started. Another pattern I like to use is one, two, three, five. It gives it a little more linear. And then whenever I'm coming down, let's say, um, if I, I'm going like from the concert B flat to the E flat, I'll just walk down the scale right there on that fourth measure. So here's that one, two, three, five pattern. One, two. <laughs> soloistic. So I'm going to kind of walk some free bass lines and eventually I'll start kind of just playing more lines and stuff. So I might do something like this. <laughs> interesting uh, kind of boppish lines and whatnot. So I would I would take a deep dive into some bass lines. All right. Now when you work on cold duck time, I would highly recommend that you listen. Actually for all these, check out the classic recordings. Because by listening and imitating, you're gonna learn more than anything I can verbally tell you. And I can teach you a scale but it's not going to really mean much until you hear it used. And um, Eddie Harris is a master at funky pentatonic playing. Um, and so I would check out Eddie Harris's version of Cold Duck Time and any, any other version that inspires you, of course. And so one way of practicing is you can just put your metronome on and then practice, kind of imagine that, that Cold Duck Time rhythm section playing and just try to play very riff and rhythmically on your F minor pentatonic, concert F minor pentatonic. And that pentatonic will work great all the way through the whole song. So um, it's a very useful tool. Um, here we go, I'll try it. So I'm gonna start just playing rhythmically uh, and limit myself to those pentatonic notes. One, two, So 
So that's a way you just play the pentatonic, think rhythmically. It can be very simple. You don't have to. Um, could be something like one, two, come, come. <laughs> St. Thomas, if you look at that tune, it has all these chords. They're just a gazillion chords. What do you do with all that? And um, St. Thomas probably initially was a folk song. It didn't have all those chords. And one thing you're going to start learning that usually when you have a tune that has a whole slew of chords that are basically in the same key, real simple chord cadences are kind of underlied. So what I would encourage you to try is just try playing St. Thomas with just one, four, and five chords. It'll work. And if you look at that on the lead sheet, you have the original changes that Sonny Rollins was playing. And if you look below, you'll have simplified changes. Try playing melodic lines using those simplified changes over the complex changes. And you may find, wow, it sounds great. It's very easy. Then start working in the more complex changes. And one thing I would try, limiting yourself to chord tones at first, using the simple changes. So for example, um, the way the simple changes go, it's basically in C concert. And you basically got C, and then um, a C, G, C. And that's all you have for the first half. And then the second half, instead of playing uh, the, the three six that they have indicated, you just play one and then you play four, and you play five. And you're gonna find that just playing these simple, this simple changes will help make it so when you start playing the more complex changes, your phrasing is just much more natural. I'm gonna play St. Thomas, and I'm gonna just, at first, just use the simple chord progression, and I'm gonna limit myself to mostly chord tones. I'm gonna gradually start getting more complicated, but I'm gonna start with just a real simple chord tone improvisation here we go. One, two, one, two. And then trying to just learn everything you can by ear instead of just off the written page. That's really the key to learning to improvise. It's, it's like a language. Uh, it's like you're not going to uh, read everything you say. You want to just be able to say it as naturally as you speak. And just listen, listen, listen gives you an idea of kind of the tradition of some of these songs and how musicians make them feel so magical. The other thing is, when in doubt, just play. Don't worry about, are you playing it exactly the way I've suggested? I mean, it, have a good time. Have fun with the material. Um, again, the more you can just memorize so you're not reading, um, the better. But do what you have to do that works for you. Don't feel like there's only one way to learn all this stuff. Um, I would say the more you can ear train, the more you can just play, learn tunes, any tune by ear, uh, play them in different keys. That's all great practice. So, and again, I think uh, the most important thing is, I hope you come and I hope you have a great time and I hope this inspires you to get, get into improvisation uh, a lot deeper. Hey everybody, I hope you'll take a second to take a look at uh, my book, Strategies for Improvisation. I wrote this with my colleague, Dr. Scott Axter, we think it's a great 
getting an intermediate level guide into the basic skills you need to improvise well. So take a look at this. Hope to see you soon.